If there's anything the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed, it's that a crisis can bring out the very best and the very worst in people. For instance, as New York City prepared itself for the worst in early 2020, Samaritan's Purse dispatched an army of Christian medical professionals and volunteers to set up an emergency field hospital in Central Park, all at no cost to the city. Yet, because Samaritan's Purse holds Christian beliefs, some city council members demanded that the charity pull up stakes and leave. Like we said, the best and the worst. Likewise, in Washington, D.C., shortly after officials allowed Black Lives Matter and defund the police to be painted on streets, two pro-life advocates from a small group affiliated with Students for Life of America and the Frederick Douglass Foundation were arrested for writing Black Preborn Lives Matter in temporary chalk on the same streets, even though they had requested a permit from the city in advance. The message was simple. You're free to express yourself and gather in large crowds with people who agree with you, but not if you disagree with the government's preferred message. But it's not just in big cities like New York and Washington that we've seen this dynamic play out. It's happening all over the country, including small towns like Panola, Mississippi, population 1,543. That's where school officials barred third grader Lydia Booth from expressing her deeply held religious beliefs on her school-mandated mask, even though her classmates could express their non-religious views. Ever since school had opened back up for in-person classes in the early fall, students throughout Simpson County had shown up wearing masks bearing all kinds of messages. Some of Lydia's classmates wore masks that said, Black Lives Matter. Others wore masks sporting the logos of local football, basketball, or baseball teams. But only Lydia Booth wore a mask that, in administrators' minds, crossed the line. What was this offending message? Three words. Jesus loves me. Pretty offensive, huh? At least that's what the grown-ups running Lydia's taxpayer-funded public school must have thought. And that's why school officials pulled the nine-year-old aside and forced her to take off her mask and swap it out for a different one. Despite their claims to the contrary, administrators were discriminating against Lydia, and her parents weren't about to stand by and allow their daughter to be silenced. Students at a public school don't need a permission slip to speak freely on campus. The First Amendment guarantees that right. So Lydia's mom, Jennifer, researched the school's policy on masks only to find that there was no rule about what messages were allowed. Along with posting on social media about the treatment her daughter faced at school that day, Jennifer set up a meeting with school administrators. In response, school officials scrambled to produce a new policy banning messages on face masks to try and escape the consequences of their own censorship. Yet the backpedaling rule only made things worse, explicitly banning all messages on masks that are political, religious, or that may be offensive. As it turns out, Unconstitutionally banning more speech isn't the cure for an unconstitutional ban on some speech. Remember that first lesson from kindergarten? Two wrongs don't make a right. In response to the school district's actions, and to make sure this doesn't happen at other schools, Alliance Defending Freedom filed a federal lawsuit. This isn't just about a mask. It's about a public school picking and choosing which viewpoints are welcome at school. When it comes to free speech, the government can't pick winners and losers depending on what people have to say. That applies at public schools every bit as much as it does on public street corners. As a society, we've debated many things during the COVID-19 pandemic. But one thing that's not debatable is whether students have the right to free speech at school. The First Amendment settled this question over 200 years ago. Free speech isn't optional. It's mandatory. Become part of the movement to defend our First Amendment freedoms today. Visit adflegal.org slash standforfreedom.